As promised, I'm starting a series on jQuery. Today, our goal is to get a project set up in Visual Studio that uses jQuery. We won't be explaining much in the way of syntax, but we will get our first Hello World application up and running. To start off, the first thing you'll want to do is to create a new project. Once you finish this example, you'll have a pretty good idea of how to add jQuery to an existing project. So even if your goal is to add jQuery to an existing project, for now, just create a new project and follow along. Once you've created the new project, the first thing you'll want to do is create a new subdirectory for the jQuery JavaScript file. I just called mine JS, and you can see I've already added jQuery into that directory. You can go to jQuery.com and download your version of jQuery right here. You can download it and copy it into your directory or just download it right to your directory uh, directly. Now the next thing we're going to want to do here is to create a master page. And the master page will allow us to have that JavaScript file automatically pulled in for all of our other pages. So master page up here, and I'm going to call it main.master. And you'll see in Visual Studio 2008, we get two content placeholders, one in the head section and one in the body section. Uh, we're going to leave the one in the head section because we're going to want that later. Right now, we're going to drag and drop our jQuery script into this master page, and it's automatically going to create our script tag for us. So we're done with the master page. That's all we need to do there. The next thing that we want to do is we're going to need to delete this ASPX file because uh, when we created the project, uh, it wasn't using the master page or it wasn't a master page to use. Uh, so we need to go and recreate that file. So add new item, web form, tell it to use a master page. And there we go. Now, to get to actually run jQuery commands, we need an external JavaScript file that's going to uh, execute uh, our jQuery commands for us. And there are a couple different ways you could do that. You could put uh, the, the separate uh, JS files all under the, uh, the JS directory, or you could put the JS files with the ASPX file. Now, I'm going to recommend that we put it with the ASPX file because generally what we want to do is have our JavaScript files that are going to do our executing for the page with the page. Not always the case. If you do put them under the JS, I would uh, recommend that you do two things, that you at least name it the same as uh, the ASPX file name, and that you mirror the directory structure under JS that you have under the root. So I'm going to go and add a new item and add this JavaScript file, and we're going to call it default.js. And then I wrote some kind of hello world type script here. Uh, if you need a copy of the script that's over on the blog, there'll be a link to my uh, blog in the descriptions here. So that's going to just say jQuery is working. I'll go ahead and save that. And now we're back in our default page and up in the, the content section here that's replacing the content in our head section, you know, the, the content placeholder. Uh, we're going to drag and drop this JS so that that script automatically gets uh, created for us. And now we can go ahead and run the default .ASPX page. And there it is, jQuery is working. Now, there's one other thing we could do here. I'm not going to do it today, but one thing we could do is you could write some code in your uh, code behind for your master page 
that automatically detects what ASPX page uh, you're on and loads the associated default.js file. Um, and if you wanted to do it kind of conditionally, you know, if there is a JS file loaded, if there isn't, don't load it. Uh, you could actually write some smart code for that. And then you wouldn't have to uh, actually insert the script for the uh, page every time you created a new page. You could just start working right away. Uh, so that's just an alternative method.